Mail bag. Yeah, that was that good. Was I think it was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> We've got some questions. We've got, We've got some, some mailbag. Thanks for sending in your mail. Thank you. You can send in your mail, viva at scarecrow.com. Mm -hmm. You want to give us an old fashioned handwritten letter? You can send it to 5030 Roosevelt Way Northeast, Seattle, Washington, 98105. Yeah. You want to send us some art or some stuff or if you're, just like if you're in town and you know you happen to know what exactly when we're filming uh you could bring us some food <laughs> yeah can you bring us some food <laughs> bring us a bring us a pizza pie bring or bring us, us some cold boys baconators oh uh, my god yeah I mean, you may notice we're, we're not drinking rainier yeah they're, they're all out of the store they're out of rainier it's too hot this is heat wave people need their this those is heat cold wave. and thank you as always for sending us mail uh, I've got a message here from Cody Downs, who's a fan of our podcast, Suspense is Killing Us, too. Hi, Cody. He sent us uh, he sent us some uh, reindeer, Deer? like, meat sticks. It, well, it was like, they were beets, it had reindeer meat in it. It was really good. <laughs> from yeah, Alaska. You've eaten reindeer now. You can I have eaten reindeer now. I've eaten uh, alligator and kangaroo jerky. Well, I've never had kangaroo, but I've had alligator. I don't really remember if it was good or bad. No. I just went to, like, a jerky store in, like, a season. No, I did have kangaroo. It wasn't good i went to seaside oregon and there was like a jerky store and yeah not like weird ones did you go to the same spot it might have been if jerky you guys want to send us some weird jerky you can also do that <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> we'll eat it should be fine we'll eat it on we'll eat it on the show uh but Thanks that's not what that's not what the, that's not this letter about. <laughs> kevin emily greetings and salutations um my questions many but brief await your kind response one I don't have an answer for this, but you do, I think. Would Chris Novoselic be someone you'd consider having to make an appearance on your live feed on Scarecrow Day in October if he were to accept as he lives in Seattle? I only ask as 2021 is his 30th anniversary of Nirvana's Nevermind. The answer is yes. Yeah. So we, we would absolutely, we would absolutely answer, have any of the guys from Nirvana oh, on our show. The answer is a resounding <laughs> yes. Um, I assume by Scarecrow Day he means Video Store Day. V video October, Store Day, right? yeah. Of course we would have him on our show. I feel like we would have uh, a lot of celebrities mm -hmm. on our show if we could that would be awesome as long as they weren't like very much pieces of shit <laughs> yeah, um, exactly but, i mean i've heard he he gets involved in a lot of like kid like uh music stuff and oh, cool. like is very okay. supportive in like the arts and education for young people i'm not sure if he's like a big movie buff do you know i have no idea i don't know i know liter almost literally n nothing about all of the members of Nirvana living so and I dead. Was super, so. I was obsessed with Nirvana in eighth grade, like seventh and eighth grade. So I, I used to know a lot, but mostly about Kurt Cobain. Um, he was the lead singer. Yeah. Didn't like <laughs> him and Courtney Love like have a scarecrow account here? They did, and uh, they're, I don't know if there's anybody who works here now who helped them, but they they used to, it was like way back in the day when George ran the store and they yeah. were like, you know, they were like big renters at the original location. It'd be cool. Apparently they racked up a shit ton of late fees. I'm not surprised, <laughs> but it would be really cool if we could access their rental history. Oh, I don't know if there's any way to do that. Anyways, yeah, um, I don't know why why you, you asked, Cody, but if you have a connection and you want to hook this <laughs> up, that's really cool. Go, Yeah, please. So, uh, number two, uh, while the COVID-19 pandemic rages sadly on but hopefully eradicated in great volumes by 2021's end what are some genres that you got to appreciate possibly more since uh, March 2020 any titles from said genre you think deserve a spotlight and recommending <laughs> you go Me you first? start yeah um <laughs> yeah. Uh, well I had stuff that I wrote down and then I like came to a realization as me and Kevin were talking off camera but the stuff I wrote down I wrote down that I've, I've been watching I feel like I've been watching a lot of like older like classic dramas and and comedies i know i've mentioned oh, like cool. Dor dorothy arzner a few times mm -hmm. on here i obviously i suggest dance girl dance but also uh working girls and i believe she did merrily we go to hell as well but then i also dug into some eric romer movies which i'd never seen before nice. this last summer like not this summer but the summer before um so i'd also suggest those i've seen the, the green ray which there's another title for it that i always summer Summer. Yes. <laughs> but then there's also a Summer's Tale, which yes, is a different yes, movie, yeah. which is also great. And then Pauline at the Beach is something I also recommend that I saw. Yeah. All, I, I'm a big fan of all of Romer's movies. Yeah. Everything I've seen yeah. so far has been great. Yeah. Um, also, what we've realized is I've gotten really into uh, piano movies. <laughs> That's a genre. Why not? I watched uh, the Harvey Keitel movie Fingers, where he's the mm -hmm. mob piano guy. And then the remake of that, which was uh, the beat that my heart skipped which was a piano movie, and then I, I watched The Piano, um, 
Yep. And then I watched <laughs> The Piano Teacher, <laughs> th that steamy one. And then... <laughs> steamy. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen The Pianist, and I haven't seen Shoot the Piano Player. Okay. Oh my gosh, I've also gotten really into Australian movies. Now it's now I'm unlocking all this shit. I know. You... Uh, this is like therapy. <laughs> so I've gotten into a lot of Australian movies, as you guys, if you've watched, have, have also noticed. So if you have any piano movies or Australian movies, um, please give me your recommendations. I don't know that I did like get into any like really into any specific new genres during the pandemic. I mean, I watched a lot more movies. I did start watching a lot of Frederick Wiseman documentaries yeah. a while ago. I didn't continue to watch all of them, but I watched like a good handful and that was it's not really a genre, but I don't I actually don't watch Only a ton of documentaries. Piano, I did get like just deeper into some genres that I love already. I think yeah. I watched a lot more like uh Hong Kong action stuff from the 90s, 80s and 90s, which is like become my favorite my favorite genre because yeah. I and I, I'll just like randomly pick ones off the shelf that look like the, I, you can tell from the box art like what you know what year it's from kind of and it, right. if it's I've done that like two or three times just gone like I'm just gonna rent this one and I like the title it's got these actors I recognize from other movies yeah and it looks like it's it looks like it's uh, intense or something and like I've never been disappointed there's always good action yeah. like every Hong Kong movie from that period the action is is like uh, is better than pretty much every action movie from America. But I mean, I, f I felt deep. I just felt deeper into watching the same movies. Plus, I have to watch like all these uh, thrillers for our podcast. Yes, yeah, so you inevitably week, which like, like just dive deeper into. I that mean, anyways. you know, dog you know, movies. I, dog, over movies the last dog movies. Dog movies is probably that's, it. that's the genre. Dog movies is the genre that I got more into. <laughs> same. Because we've watched we've watched all these fucking dog movies for this we've show. So many. And I'll find myself just talking about dog movies when I'm like in different company no, that's I'll be not us I'll, I'll be like you know podcast. about you know this movie fluke i just saw and blah yeah. blah blah and nobody and everybody's like oh my god why is he talking about this? i don't want to hear about yeah, nobody like, wants to hear I about air bud was like nine and you're like well <laughs> watch it. um yeah dog movies i think is the one we both have gotten have dug a lot deeper into yeah. over the past it's year it's true for sure. it's true yeah may you and those close to you continue to stay health stay safe stay healthy at the same time Bursts of immense courage, inspiration, and success in all you pursue. Cordially, Cody Downs. So mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, he's, he's very nice. I love that. Thanks, thanks for the letter, Cody. Thanks, Cody. And I hope that was those answers were good. I think they were. <laughs> all right, we got a we got a message. We got an email from someone who I don't think has ever emailed us before, which is awesome. Yeah, like as far as I know. Yeah. We get a new person. Hi, Emily, Kevin, and Rich. I'm John from New York. I stumbled across Viva. Okay, also I want to apologize because someone also emailed and was like, please don't read this. <laughs> please don't read my email on air because you guys read the last one and I sounded like a total doofus. <laughs> and I, I think it's just... I think it's just me reading it like in the doofus <laughs> way and I honestly like you guys don't sound dumb so just please don't yeah, be afraid yeah. to have us read it on the air. It's literally me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry. Okay. It's not me for it's sure. It's definitely not Kevin. I stumbled across Viva Physical Media in December from someone who retweeted one of Emily's tweets and I've been a fan ever since. I binged all the eps in a few days to get current on the show. Binge our show. Bingeable baby. What is one <laughs> film that you... <laughs> Uh, really enjoy that if you could you'd swap out the director with another director just to see how much they would have made just to see how they would have made the film same question but for a movie that you don't enjoy that much thanks for all the great work you three do everyone at Scarecrow for that matter and all the movie recommendations John thanks, thanks. John yeah thanks for writing in and hello John, New York. I'm gonna let Emily take this one to start with because I yeah at it um so I don't have any like out of like out of this world crazy answers i would love to see some of the like classic woody allen movies redone by like a female director like greta gerwig so i was like annie hall by greta gerwig and then i was like oh like francis ha <laughs> like annie ha like francis right. hall i don't know francis um, hall yeah well i mean well, she didn't technically direct but she did write so it's like it's in it's her movie really. right 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 I, I, it's very essence of her so, i guess yeah, it's yeah, Bach, but yeah. um or like you know, the Lady Bird esque, mm -hmm. and like something that focused on the neurotic female, which is, I guess is what we already get with her, her stuff. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, or like you know, what's that other guy that I don't like? Oh my god, this is gonna kill me. <laughs> is it called Modern Romance? The movie? Oh, you don't like Albert Brooks, right? Yeah, Albert Brooks. Right. Thank that's you. right. You famously don't like Albert Brooks. Famously. As discussed in episode <laughs> something. Five. I don't know. Um, mm. <laughs> so just get all these like 
filmmakers who are like, oh, I'm just like, I gotta go to my psychologist and like, oh, I have all these quirks and stuff and like sex neuroses, <laughs> but like have the woman direct it and like just call out these dudes who are just being kind of like manipulative douchebags. And then I would also say take like family movies that, you know, like Wes Anderson does really well and then just have like Ari Aster like direct them and just make them scarier which he are see and then it's like well hereditary is basically a family movie that has all those horror elements kind of and so it is it is i pair them a, you know yeah. and then uh, my favorite one is i want the safety brothers to redirect super bad because i really want the like the, the the intensity and the suspense of being like we're teens we gotta get to this party we gotta get the alcohol for this party but then I want it to have like an uncut gems good time um, <laughs> risk involved. I didn't I yeah I still don't I still don't know what I'm I still don't have anything really. What if like Richard Linklater directed like Unstoppable? <laughs> I would. <laughs> but, but it had. A, I would love it, it if Richard Linklater did. It had fucking okay, Ethan um, Hawke. Yeah, I had Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy like on the train. If Ethan Hawke and Julie on Delpy, the train. Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy were the stars of Unstoppable, and they were like just sort of casually but trying to stop the, the stop the train. Yeah, it'd be like before sun sun uh, before uh, midnight most more like because it's, that's be all like them arguing, fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Denzel could still be in there somewhere. Oh, he could still be like the guy who's actually running. The, but they're the just train. also there. But they're on the they're passengers. <laughs> they're only passengers. I like I like this movie now. I do too. I'm, I'm a big watch fan. It. I'm a big fan of that movie. I've been trying to think of like movies that I hate that I was just wish were directed by. I was trying people, to think but... of movies I hate. Period, and it's like I don't not. There's not a lot of movies that I absolutely that I can think of that I have really strong hatred towards. This is a, this is a joke, but I'd like to see a version of Hook directed by nobody, so like that it just didn't exist. <laughs> okay, and this and this is where our opinions famously differ because Hook is. A good movie. I don't know if I have like a movie that I would swap out, but I'd love to see. I'd love to see like Tarantino do like a, like a straight up horror movie. Oh, me too. Or or P. T. Anderson. I finally just recently read this the inter the Fangoria interview with him, and uh, Jordan Peele talking about uh, us, and. Uh, Jordan Peele's like, I'd love to see you do like a horror movie because there's horror elements. He was talking about Phantom Thread too. and how there's horror elements like, to it, you know, just like the atmospheric-ness yeah. of like Magnolia. Or but like, like, I just watched, I rewatched yeah. The Master yesterday. But those are more like guys I'd love to see just do any genre, but also just sort of like, you know, and I don't know that they're capable of like doing it, just going like, I'm gonna do straight up genre, a straight up genre thing. Um, would be cool though. You know, but that would, but something like that would be, something like that I would think would be awesome. We might have to what keep director, coming back to directors this question. Do I, I know, this is a good question and I, I, I am uh, sorry I didn't do my homework. I really blew it. I really, I really fucked this one up. <sighs> so we're cutting uh, the show now. But you're gonna have to, so you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to keep watching. Yeah, so that uh, you're gonna have to keep watching the the next episodes. Now I'm just like looking at the movies around. I know that's like, what I keep doing. Like, uh, I remember when I was younger, I always thought like you know it would be cool is to see like these like guy like a Robert Altman do like an Armageddon type movie or something. I would but rather see this guy of, like, shortcuts the earthquake shit. And everything. Yeah, yeah. But it's not so much that I would. I guess this is a question. I, this is something I've always thought about, and I don't know if this is exactly answering your question. But it's more like I've always had this thought like I'd like to see directors that like are doing interesting things do like the normal the normal uh hollywood shit but like but if they let them get away with their shit too. right 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 uh you know so so it'd be like if if like altman or pt anderson or wes anderson or somebody had the fucking budget of a marvel movie but like there was nobody there going like mm, you can't do the weird stuff you normally do, yeah. you know, which is yeah. like mm, for the most part the case with like a lot of that's the big budget superhero tentpole stuff. It's not they're not auteur things. But I would, I've always wanted to see that. I would yeah. see Greta Gerwig's superhero movie almost because it would be like. But if they let her just do it and it wasn't like the thing where you go like oh I like this director but they're gonna be that totally neutered really too yeah you know I'm also sick of the whole thing where like uh, now big new directors become popular and then people are like oh what but when what movie what what Star Wars or superhero movie are they gonna direct and I'm like well, so who cares what yeah, don't you want to see them do the interesting stuff that they like you're not happy with Marvel <laughs> I'm gonna go see Black Widow when it comes out in a couple um, of I started weeks watching, probably I started watching uh, Army of the Dead last night and then I fell asleep yeah, I know it's, it's not a Marvel movie but Snyder it, Cut. It's not great. It's a Snyder Cut. 
It's a snored, it a, a snorter gun. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I'll probably cut that part. No, probably. please don't. Don't Snyder uh, cut that part. All right, well, no. If you Snyder, Snyder that when you Snyder cut things, you keep everything in, or you put, or you cut everything and then you put it back in and you put it in four three. So I'm this, this section's <laughs> gonna be in. Uh, Window boxed. Yeah, and then we have. I mean, you already put the chapters in anyway, so. But yeah, it's got chapter breaks, so it's chapter, chapter two. All right, John. I hope we answered your question. Oh, that was. I don't think we did very well, but thanks for my, thanks for, But thanks for watching. Actually, Emily did a good job, and then I kind of blew it. But it was rambly, and I mean, I if you watch the other episodes, you get it. You binged it, so like you're like you're like we're like in your head now. So, shit. We're in your head now, man. <laughs> Um, but thank oh. you for writing in and asking us those questions. Did they were we very thought provoking. Kevin's gonna be up all night tossing and turning. I am. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have the best answers like at fucking three in the morning now. I'll be you like, better journal. I'll be like, then. fuck. I'm not gonna get up and journal it. I'm gonna want to go back to sleep. Text me, or record <laughs> on your phone. Did we? Did we mention it's 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 the hottest it's ever been here today? It's I think that explains. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna <laughs> just say that explains it. Yeah. That anything it's that the, happens that's it's not too great, hot. It's, it's hot. It's too hot. Uh, that's our mailbag, yeah. Mailbag! Mail uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs>